that leads quite nicely, Paul, okay, into your question. Do, do you remember it? Let me let me read it while you think about it, Paul. If I got it wrong, what I was most interested in what I was most interested in was that. Uh, your point about um, consultation with residents associations over neighbourhood forums. Yeah. Um, right, well, I noticed in the advert tonight that there's an announcement that there will be a neighbourhood forum set up for Escort. Um, to my knowledge, none of the three residents associations, that's Queen's Park, Park Garden or Kings Hill, have been consulted on this. So it's what is the speaker's view on this? Um, do you think that residents' associations should be involved in this new neighbourhood forum? How would you take this proposal forward? And what is your view on political involvement in the proposed neighbourhood forum? So, three questions. Do you answer that? you want me to repeat that? <laughs> well, I think, I think uh, Andy, it's your, the Labour will go next, so you need to find... Okay, sorry, can you just... Yeah, yeah. so, again? proposed neighbourhood forum for Escorts. Yeah. I don't know whether the three residents' associations have been consulted. Now I go to Queen's Park and we've got the other residents' associations. So we, do you think, we've not been. Right. Yeah. Do you think residents' associations should be involved in this neighbourhood forum? Um, how would you take the proposals for a neighbourhood forum forward if you think it's a good idea? And what is your view on political involvement in this neighbourhood forum? Um, well, for starters, we, we keep talk about uh, an escort neighbourhood forum. And, I'm pretty well. I actually know that there's a bit of a dispute in the council that uh, the borough solicitor doesn't like the idea of uh, a neighbourhood forum just being a He wants uh, a wider neighbourhood forum, which is going to be less <laughs> central. So, that, so we haven't even got to that point of the boundaries. As far as it's concerned, I think that the, these steps are all set out how these neighbourhood forums are going to be forward. Um, it's not something that you can do overnight. There's going to be consultation processes that have to go through. Um, and uh, I, haven't got any, I haven't got any objections to those, but what I, I would agree that I, I've, I've been quite vocal in that I'm really not very happy with residents associations that are uh, too tightly tied to political parties. And the reason being is that if somebody comes along to a residents association and raises an issue on a political forum, for that to end up in a party political leaflet bashing another party afterwards it completely defeats the object of a, of a residents association. So I have to say it has to be as non-political as possible to ask to do the work because obviously there's people who get involved and have got political views. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Okay. So, Bill, you're... Yeah, certainly a problem with residents associations. I mean, in theory, it's a good idea, but uh, they may just reflect the views of a small a fairly small minority who is perhaps vested interests and so on. I mean, I think the ideal solution, and this is not part of our question, would be to have parish councils covering the whole urban areas as well. And then you'd have elected local representatives on a much smaller basis if you have a... So yeah, I think the ideal um, locality is actually about 500 households so if you have a parish council, say a dozen people from that, you know, that, that really truly reflects uh, genuine local opinion and it's manageable. Um, at the moment, the present, present association system is very sort of ad hoc. You know, you don't know whether they exist or whether they're running and how representative they are. So they are, it is unsatisfactory. Though in theory, um, you know, it's better to have residents association than not. I think that the back garden is, is quite a sort of uh, refreshing innovation, if you like. You know, they're doing good work, but I, you know, I think it's difficult to get this sort of local involvement across the whole town, which is probably what we need. Thanks. Thank you, Bill. I, thank you for the advert, but I'll come to you very quickly. But let, let me just say that I think many of us share the concerns that residents' associations are not democratic, mm -hmm. uh, and they do represent people who just shout loudly or have, you know. Mr. Talbot behind him looking threatening at people. It, it is a risk, it is a danger, um, but you can only work with what, what, what in the situation you're in. Deborah, you've got the shortest last one. Yeah, so I mean, uh, just going on to that, that point actually about um, Community Council Residents Association, you're right, they're, they're not elected as such, in terms of actually you do try to get as, as wide a membership as you possibly can, but actually it's people who take an interest. Um, I've been associated with the Queen's Park Community Council for as 
Well, funny enough, since I was, I was, I since I was elected um, as a councillor, but it was actually just trying to get involved in, in, in one of the community councils there more than anything else. It just so happened eventually I ended up being the chairperson, but it was, it was actually just individuals there actually um, who did, took an interest in the area. So they don't have, they have that element of democracy, but hopefully what they do have is the element of people taking an interest in their area. So I, I don't really believe politics has a role, role in that. It really is actually doing things. Um, the community council I've been involved with has been particularly strong in actually doing community, community, community activities and things like that, running, running a community cafe and park, things like that. So it's all about doing good, I think, more than anything else. So I take that point. And should they be involved in these type of things? Yes, they should. But unfortunately, we talk actually about the idea of actually these, these referendum and, and taking it forward actually in terms of planning. And of course, unfortunately in this case, it has to be councillor driven, but the next phase obviously is to, to link up with the community council and residents associations, so they become involved as well. So that's the process, right? it has to be councillor driven, but then you can involve with the community councillors. And obviously that takes some good time, so they have their meetings before the meeting, I think, set on the 29th of, 29th of May, I believe it is, or something like that. Um, so there is an involvement with that. But, um, uh, oddly enough, the first resident association I became involved with was when I became the, the vice chairman of Broad Street Community, community Council it was many years ago. And that was really, I didn't even live in the area there, but I took an, took an interest uh, and, and they welcomed me on. So it, it really is people getting involved with an interest. So uh, their membership is not political, but other people with an interest. And it would be nice to have more and more people taking part in them. And one way of doing that is just to have, make them have a bigger say in things. Uh, and I think that's, that's important as well. So having a bigger say and doing things, getting involved, actually from organising the, the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Fete, or actually, actually talk actually about getting things planted in local streets, get involved and actually make things happen. But I take it your, your point actually about when will the community council's registration get involved, I right, hopefully the next phase, but obviously it has to be council driven, so it's the councils making that first step. Okay, come on.